Today I'm going to play a modern homebrew game called Guns and Ghosts. I was pretty excited when uh, I purchased this, and yes, I actually purchased a Commodore 64 game. Um, there are, you know, a lot of these homebrew games come out, and they only want a couple bucks for them, so uh, I'm more than happy to support Commodore 64 developers. This one, I saw some of the early videos on it, and it looked it just looked fantastic. It's it's uh, Guns and Ghosts. It's a platformer, but it um, it moves very fast. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, when I first got this, I played it probably every day for a couple of weeks. I loved it. Um, uh, it's just a fantastic game. So uh, as soon as it loads up here, um, we'll do a gameplay on it. That's one thing I really love about the Commodore 64 scene is that Every year there are a lot of high quality, uh, great games that come out. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's always amazing to me the volume of uh, content that comes out for the Commodore 64. Um, you know, let's see if this actually loads here. So when you're presented here with the menu, um, you can play a one-player game with uh, the character George, um, where two-player game where two people are Trev, two two players with George, cooperative play. Um, there are a lot of modes here; it makes it a lot of fun. Um, I George is a character that uses a shotgun, so you have to um, collect bullets in the game. Uh, Trev uses like this uh, lightning force that um, varies in length. Um, you'll see what I mean when I play the game. I actually prefer playing with Trev. Um, so another thing is you can play this game with the music on so that um, it's playing this music that you hear all through the game. And I, and I did that for the first several times I played. Um, it starts to get a little monotonous after a while, so I usually just switch to sound effects. So you can toggle that going left or right. Um, so anyway, let's just play with that with just sound effects and just um, as Trev. Now there's not a lot of sound in this game other than uh, like grabbing power-ups and I think uh, uh, when monsters first appear or something like that. But um, it's fine. The, the gameplay is a lot of fun. So basically your platformer, when you have Trev, you can use this little lightning. You have to get close enough to them. Now your lightning can grow by grabbing power-ups. So you don't want to get touched by any of these monsters here. So as you can see, down at the bottom, it added a little like sideways rainbow looking thing there. That means that the lightning now is a little bit longer. By the way, if you hit these guys, I'll show you this. When you hit these guys... If you don't kill them, they'll just go into the ground, like you saw there, and then they'll pop back up. And they pop they pop up. Now those little uh, med things are lives. You can see at the bottom I have six lives. Um, now I got seven lives. And you get a lot of lives in this game because later in the game, the game gets really tough. These first few levels are pretty easy. You just don't want to get too close to these guys. Oh, like that. That S is uh, basically you get invulnerability for a little while. And there are different monsters in later levels. Um, by the way, these power-ups disappear, I think, over time, so you don't want to forget them. You don't want to let them go too long. The, the ones that increase the length of the lightning bolt are really important. Um, you'll be able to hit people from across the screen, which makes it, the game a lot easier. Go. 
so that added another life. Let's see if I can grab that. Yep, got it. This level is kind of odd in that you can't make that jump. See, this is too high. So you're just waiting for monsters to fall into this pit. And you got to kind of manage them as they fall in. If you don't get them right away, then the zombies are going to overwhelm you. Oh, see that guy went because I didn't grab him correctly. This isn't going to go well. No. So as I was saying, if you pick the other character, George, to play, he has a shotgun instead of the kind of lightning coming from his hands. Uh, and you have to manage. Now, I can't remember if you do power-ups. I think you do power-ups to get more bullets. Um, yeah, I think that is true. I never played the other character. I always like this one better, so... Guys, too close. That should finish this level off. It, this game, as you can see, I mean, I have nine lives right now. Those do go much faster later in the game as it gets a lot harder, but. It is, I did notice it's a lot of lives, but it's cool because it means you can get further in the game. Um, haven't seen a lightning power up in a while. Gotta be careful. there. Oh, I thought I could grab that invulnerability power up. I missed it. Ah, oh, can't grab that. I can tell you that if I was a kid, if this would have came out when I was a kid, I would have loved it. It's 
So I think the next level here has different types of enemies. I do remember this one type of enemy, I think it's coming up here in a little bit later level, where uh, when you look at him, when you face him, he runs very fast towards you. It might be the next level. You know what? I think it's the next level. Yeah, it's this one. So these skeletons, when they drop, if you if they're on your level here, if they're facing you, they run full speed at you, oh, like that. See, so this guy right here, he's not really going to be a threat till he turns around and then he comes at you full speed, which then you can just zap him. some of these oops birds up here to get these guys you just got to get right on the ledge there Let's see if I can grab this guy in the air oh he's not gonna fall down Oh, I didn't hold the button down long enough there. Oh, wow. I'm playing with uh, the arcade joystick, which can be a little unforgiving sometimes when you press the button. Get rid of these bats and I should clear the level here. Ugh. The game is up, pushing up to jump, which I always find a little tricky. All right, so if I remember right, this one yeah, I think this is pretty... I believe there are 70 levels in this game. And I know that when I was really heavily playing this game, I got pretty far. I don't I never got all the way through it, but I think I got into the thirties or something like that. Wasn't fast enough. Just got him. So I think that pretty much does this level. Okay, see these headless uh, these headless guys. 
They are very tough to kill. They take a very long time to kill. And they jump. So if you if I'm up on this level, this guy can jump. See? And so you gotta be careful if they're underneath you. Anyway, they make very good distractions for the skeletons so when they start moving fast. Oh, like that. Oh, just missed that guy. Oh, no! Anyway, um, I don't want this video to go on too long. You get the gist. There's 70 different screens. This is level 10, so you can imagine there's 60 more screens, um, different enemies. Uh, the game's quite a bit, but it just shows you, gives you a little taste of the Commodore 64 homebrew um, environment. The games are very high quality. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.